In this video, I'd like to talk about the relationships between the angles of parallel lines. So we have these two lines, AB and CD, that are parallel. So we can write that as line AB is parallel to line CD. That means if you extend them indefinitely, as long as you want, they will never cross each other. And this line here, EF, this is what we refer to as a transversal. So it's the line that will cut two parallel lines. And with this transversal, you can see it intersects both lines and many different angles are formed at each of these intersections. So I'm gonna label these angles. We can call this angle one, two, three, and four. And over here, we can call this five, six, seven and eight. So when a transversal crosses two parallel lines, there are actually eight angles that are created. And the relationships between these angles is fairly straightforward. The main thing you wanna notice is that this angle here, five, is the same as this angle here, one. In fact, we have a name for these. So let me write this down, angle one and angle five, these are equal. We call these corresponding angles. And depending how we wanna set up our approach to geometry, we can take this as a postulate or as an axiom. It's something that we're going to assume is true without having to prove it. And we could approach it a different way, but this is one of the more modern ways to approach it. And you can visually see that these would be true. In fact, there are many sets of corresponding angles here. So we can also see that this angle six and this angle two, these are also corresponding angles. In fact, they look like they're equal. Now, you do want to be careful with pictures and you don't want to assume things based off the picture because it's often difficult to draw things correctly. But in this case, it will always be true that when you have two parallel lines and they're cut by a transversal, these corresponding angles are going to be equal. So also angle four and angle eight, these would be corresponding as well and they would be equal. And you could test this a little bit further like let's say that we have two other parallel lines and let me draw them over here and we'll draw them a little bit closer together. And let's say we have a much steeper transversal. And again, here you can see these corresponding angles right here and here, they again look like they're equal. In fact, they are equal. So you can play around with this if you also maybe drew a transversal, let me change colors, that is more vertical, then again, you can see these are going to be equal. In fact, they almost look like they're right angles. So no matter how you draw these transversals, these corresponding angles are going to look like they're equal because they are equal to each other. So that's something, like I said, we're just going to assume is true. Now, if you study Euclid's Elements, the ancient textbook on geometry that essentially was the world's first textbook, it's approached a little bit differently. And in that approach, you basically make the assumption that the two angles in the middle on the same side, so angle four and angle five, you make the assumption that if these are not two right angles, if they don't add up to 180 degrees, then the two lines are gonna come together, which essentially applies that if they are supplementary, if they do add up to 180 degrees, that these would be parallel. And from the fact that they're supplementary, you can prove that the corresponding angles are equal. So that's another approach we could take, but in either way, we're gonna to have to make some type of assumption here. And like I said, it's a more modern approach to just assume that the corresponding angles are equal. So with this idea that these corresponding angles are equal, we can also learn some other properties. So we know that vertical angles are equal. 
So this angle one would also be equal to angle three since vertical angles are equal. So we can say angle one and angle three are equal. These are vertical or vertical angles with each other. And because of that, notice that angle three and angle five are equal to each other. So let me make a little bit of room since we have another set of words we use to describe angle three and angle five. So angle three we know is equal to angle five and these we call alternate interior angles. They're interior angles because they are on the inside of the parallel lines and they are alternate because they're on other sides of the transversal. So these are gonna be equal and notice that angle five would also be equal to angle seven. So you can always set these vertical angles equal to each other and likewise six and eight and two and four would be equal. So with this idea, we also have alternate exterior angles and those would be equal as well. So an example of that would be angle seven and angle one. And again, these are called alternate because they are on other sides of the transversal. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're called exterior angles because they are on the exterior of the parallel lines. They're on the top and the bottom rather than on the inside, which is again, what we call the interior. So these are three that you're gonna see a lot. And there's one other relationship that we do wanna consider. And that's if they're on the same side and they're interior. So this angle five and angle four, these are gonna be supplementary. And I'm running out of room here, but we can say that angle four and angle five, these are supplementary. They're equal to 180 degrees. And you can see that this is true because we know that angle three and angle five are equal to each other. And we also know that angle three and angle four are supplementary because they form the angle of a line. So those would be equal to 180. So we could have set up that relationship that angle three and angle four equal to 180 and then just substitute angle three for angle five into this relationship. But if they are on the same side and their interior angles, these are gonna be supplementary to each other. So these are the main relationships we wanna know, that corresponding angles are equal, alternate interior angles are equal, and alternate exterior angles are equal. But we do also wanna know that the same side interior angles, that these are supplementary to each other. And we're gonna use these properties to solve different problems involving parallel lines. So let's look at one example. And we have these two parallel lines, which are usually marked by arrows. Notice they each have two arrows. So this line here without any arrows, this is our transversal. And we can start by noticing which angle is corresponding to this. So that would be this angle right here. This would also be 131 degrees and we could have approached it differently. We could have also looked at the vertical angle to this. This would also be 131. And then this angle is corresponding to the green one. Or the green one is vertical to this one that was corresponding to our original angle that we were given. So many ways to approach the problem, but basically this missing angle is equal to this angle here. And you might have noticed that just by looking at it because they are what we call alternate interior angles. That was this vocabulary here. And alternate interior angles, those are always equal. But the main idea is that because they were, these were parallel lines, we were able to figure out this missing angle is just 131 degrees.